it's time to talk about the general hyperpigmentation routine. Let's just sum up everything we've been discussing in the past couple of episodes. I think, too, the, the biggest takeaway is um, hydroquinone being the gold standard isn't right for everyone. But when we're <laughs> talking about replacing hydroquinone, there isn't one thing that like quite cuts it. And even <laughs> hydroquinone is oftentimes prescribed in conjunction with tretinoin and even yeah. a cortical steroid. So honestly, kitchen sink method is just the way to go with this. Yeah. And we should also remind people that um, hopefully after listening to all of these clinical te tests that we've been sharing with you, the timeline is really important. Mm -hmm. It's going to take six months, honestly, on average. Um, so hopefully you guys are giving your routines long enough to see some sort of benefit. And just remember that even for the hydroquinone group, they're not seeing a complete removal of their melasma situation even after a uh, half year, a year, you're seeing significant reduction, but you're not going to be able to completely erase it. We should also remind people that, you know, hydroquinone is that active that's not meant to be a long term active in your routine. Mm -hmm. It's important to make sure you're teamed up with a derm to really monitor your progression. And basically after that, hopefully you have some new ideas of what actives you can incorporate. Actually, let's go through a couple product recs per active we discussed. First thing, being niacinamide. Most likely you have this on already. I yeah. don't know if we need to really suggest a product here. You really don't need to buy a specific niacinamide serum um, to, you know, reap the benefits. And remember, the clinical was testing at 4%. So that's really all you need. On the flip side, if you have a hydro, uh, if you have a pigmentation serum, Definitely double check to see that niacinamide should be a pretty easy one. Like Victoria mentioned, you don't need a ton of it. Uh, if you have a niacinamide serum that's maybe in your routine for other reasons and you want to go out and shop for a, uh, a hyperpigmentation serum, definitely decode that IL because odds are it's there too. So you don't mm -hmm. want to be layering like 18 different things with niacinamide here. Uh, next, we have vitamin C. The ascorbic acid version is the one we covered today. That is the gold standard because it has so much more data on on almost everything. C for Rulic is still the go to. It's good for other things too. So, definitely a, a staple, in, especially in your morning routine. Check out our C for Rulic dupes article mm -hmm. if you want to pay. How much is it again? I can't keep Eye up with C for Rulic. Like 190. I don't know. Oh my it's like God. <laughs> so <laughs> painful. Oh, oh. anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, and then finally, in terms of azelaic acid, this is a tough one. We. Right now on the market, you really can only get 10%. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are incorporating this, um, just know that 20% level is really important, actually. In terms of all the clinical testing we've seen, you really need a lot of it. So if you are going to be using a 10%, you can use it twice daily, both morning and night. Are you going to get the same level of results? It's going to be tough to say. Honestly, it's, it's probably going to be pretty hard, but it can still be helpful. And then finally, in terms of silymarin, have you heard of Mr. Reliable? I'm um, just saying. <laughs> I would say like in terms of a product that, you know, we want to recommend here, um, I can guarantee you, Gloria and I have t done a lot of work to make sure that we could get a stable version of Silymarin into a moisturizer at an effective level. So that would be our best recommendation here. Um, there is Silymarin um, used, I believe, in SkinCeuticals' new vitamin C serum. Yes. There's that as well. So yeah, 